Hello, everybody, and welcome to our online worship. I do hope that you will experience God in this time together. In this service, we are recognizing the contribution given to us by the military, the men and women who have served our country in wars in the past. So I do hope that you will experience God in this time together. I do have one announcement at this point. The church council is considering having a fellowship after church. We have consulted with the public health people and they're okay with it, but the one requirement would be we would have to check vaccines. So you will be getting an email from the office and you can respond to that email indicating that yes, you would love to have fellowship or no, you're not interested because we kind of need to have a count of how many people will be showing up to know how many cookies to bake. So let us know. So now we will take time to honor the land upon which we stand. And at this time, we honor the land where we gather. And we acknowledge that this region of Durham is part of the judiciary and treaty territory of the Mississauga of Scugog Island First Nation and the Mississauga Peoples and Treaty Territory of the Chippewa Island First Nation. We recognize and acknowledge the rich heritage of our indigenous sisters and brothers in their love of and stewardship to the land and all life upon it. Amen. We remember J.R. Anderson, age 26. Norman Bailey, age 27. Alan Bath, age 20. G.F. Carter, age 24. Fred Elvidge, age 20. Andrew Fulton, age 20. P. Hogg, age 22. Russell Johnston, age 21. Frank McGrotty, age 23. David McBrien, age 32. Harvey Palmer, age 20. Victor Pogson, age 20. William Stark, age 38.
Please join me in the call to worship. By the Ganaroska forest and the flowering trees, by the great lakes and the rolling hills, we gather together. Disciples of Christ, children of the Spirit, people of the Creator, sometimes with tears and sometimes with excitement, all the time worshiping the one who calls us to be. As we gather in this sacred space, we pause in the reference of your presence among us this day. We long to feel your loving touch move within us, shape our spirits towards your purpose as one community in Christ. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mark 12, 38 to 44. As he taught, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to the, have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which were worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow put in more than all of those who contributed to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. These are the stories from the faithful. This window was dedicated by the congregation to honor Mrs. Vernon Kemp Rowe, born as Kathleen Leesk. Kathleen Rowe was not only an important member of this church, but also of the town of Whitby. She was born in 1903 and married her husband Vernon in 1930. She had studied and taught music in college and was a very talented artist and pianist. She served as the organist and choir leader at St. Mark's for 30 years, among many other musical accomplishments. The Rowe family also donated the pulpit Bible in the church. Mrs. Kathleen Rowe died in 1958, and that year, the window in her memory was installed. The next year, she became the first person in Whitby to have a school named after them, Kathleen Rowe Memorial School. The left panel of this window has an image of a bushel of wheat meant to symbolize bread. The image is paired with scripture beneath it that reads, I am the bread of life, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. From John 6:35. The right panel holds the image of a symbol known as a Christogram, a short-formed version of the name of Christ first seen in the 7th century. It derives from the first three letters of Jesus' name in Greek. Beneath it, the text reads, For there is no other name under whereby we must be saved. Today it's Remembrance Day, a day in which at the 11th hour on the 11th day of November in 1918, 1918 World War I came to an end and the armistice was signed. So this date is set aside to honor those who fell in this war. And its name used to be called Armistice Day. Later, in order to include all those who were killed in subsequent wars, the name was changed to Remembrance Day in the Commonwealth countries. Remembrance Day is the day which we remember people. We remember people who lost their lives defending their countries and values of freedom, and to give thanks to God for deliverance in the most dangerous times in our history. And also, it's a time of reflection on our responsibility as the Christian church towards war and violence in the world, and to express our deepest longing for peace the true peace. Now my grandfather was too old and my father was too young, so I didn't lose family members in the World Wars, but I lost friends in the Vietnam War. Mr. Mann read, ran the local hardware store, 
And his son was the first boy from my small town that was killed. And I remember that day reading the headlines in the newspaper and feeling incredibly sad. And this day is celebrated in other countries as well. The irony of war is we all lament the deaths, but it never seems to stop. This day is celebrated in places like Syria and Lebanon on the government level. It's a national holiday. The president of each country visits the tomb of the unknown soldier and puts a wreath of flowers, followed by a minute of silence, which is a tribute to all the men and women who lost their lives while they were trying to get the independence for their countries. Remembrance Day is a significant date for all countries. Through the remembrance of what happened at that, on that day, that we remember, and of course our memories vary from country to country, but we all share one memory, that is the experience of war. Even though it's a time to recall the past and to remember people who died in the war, remembrance is also an action of the present day, not just something in the past. It is a time when we gather to thank God for peace, the peace that we enjoy here in Canada, and to remember the Canadian peacekeeping forces in recent areas of trouble and conflicts and to pray for those people and their families. It's also a time that we look to the future and we pray for a world that children and old women and men may live and enjoy peace. Today, remembrance is our response to the gospel mes message of repentance and obedience. One of the readings that we could have looked at was from the book of Jonah, the prophet who lived for three days in the belly of a whale Jonah rebelled against God. God wanted a messenger to go and tell the people of Nineveh that if they did not repent and leave their early ways, they, should, they shall destroy. Jonah didn't want to take this responsibility, so he fled to another country. Part of his behavior was because he believed that God was only for the Jews and not the heathens. Therefore, heathens do not deserve any mercy or salvation from his God. The story continues, and finally Jonah obeys the Lord's off order after he learned two lessons. One is that he can't hide himself from the face of God. And the second is God is not only to reward or punish the people, but God makes his voice and his will clear to all people and also give chances for new beginnings with the God who is our creator. However, when Jonah delivered God's message to the people of Nineveh, asking them to repent. The result was very amazing. They obeyed and repented. The description of the repentance of the king of Nineveh and his call to the people to change is a story not only about God's mercy and call to repentance or the duty of Jonah, the servant of God, to preach the message that God wanted him to preach. Not the one Jonah wanted, but it's also about the responsibility that we as the Christian church have. That is to be messengers of God and the conscience of the world. The real surprise in this story is the king and people of Nineveh, who when Jonah told them God's message, they repented and turned from their evil way and the violence that was in their hands. And they said, maybe God changed God's mind and may turn God's anger so that we do not perish. Jesus called the church the light of the world and called us to proclaim to the world the message of repentance so that people give up their evil ways of war and violence. And in, the, in this way, we will deserve to be called children of God, the peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. It's a great responsibility that Jesus puts on the church because all have turned away they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The evidence of this is that the wars that distract the countries and nations and the future of many people. The church is requested by the Lord to bear fruit of the Spirit in its life. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Those fruit of the Spirit are mentioned in Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. And one of them is peace. 
Remembrance Day is the day that we remind ourselves as the church that if we are true disciples of Jesus Christ, we should not be like Jonah in the beginning of his story. We love those who are around us and similar to us. And if you do so, Jesus is saying to you, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. But rather, let us be like Jonah at the end of the story, a people who love others and preach to them the message of peace and reconciliation. Then we are true disciples of our Lord. In Remembrance Day, Jesus is reminding us with his words, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. God bless you all and keep you in God's peace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this day and in this place, we pray for peace. We lament the lives that have been lost in wars across the world. We lament the violence that still exists, not only in other countries, but in our country. We lament the people that have died, and so the, the unfulfilled hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled for those families. God, we pray for ourselves. Fill us with your blessing that we will be truly be peacemakers in our community, that we will truly walk the path of bringing peace to others around us, that we will truly work at reconciliation at all times. Be with us, God, on this Remembrance Day that we remember and we do not forget. In the name of the risen Christ, and we pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. go from this place. If you're in your homes, go into the other rooms, go out in the neighborhood with peace in your hearts and spread the word to those around you.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord grant you peace now and forever. Amen. This land of peace, this land.